hello and welcome to murder mystery haunted history here we cover true crime and paranormal and from time to time we cover the history of both true crime and paranormal if that sounds interesting to you please hit that subscribe button as it really does help to throw our channel out there in the algorithm and help new people to find us if you're a returning subscriber you already know how much i truly love and appreciate you and thank you so much for always being so supportive Today we're going to jump into the topic of Dorothea Puente. I hope that I'm saying her name correctly. For anyone that has never heard of her, I hope this story interests you the way that it has interested me. So I'm going to put a little picture up here of what Dorothea looks like. And to me, this was the shock, is that she looks like just a very typical sweet granny like, she looks like she should be making you cookies and tucking you in at night. However, that's not this grandma at all. Let's jump in. So today we're talking about Dorothea Puentes, born on January 9th, 1929 in Redmond, California. She died on March 27th, 2011 at the age of 82 in a Central California women's facility. You see, Dorothea was a convicted serial killer who ran a boarding house in Sacramento, California in the 1980s. She was sentenced to life in prison without a chance for parole. That doesn't seem like the grandma I just showed you, does it? She look a little evil now? Let's keep going. So Puente has cashed in social security and disability checks for more than $87 thousand dollars from the elderly and disabled boarders she had living in her house. Now I want to back this up just a minute and talk about the fact that she had already ran a boarding house in the 70s and gotten in trouble for it. But here she is in the 80s collecting social security checks and disability checks for people that she's boarding at her house. How this happened I'm not quite sure. In 1988, police found seven bodies buried in the backyard of 1426 F Street in Sacramento. Another two bodies were found in a trash can down the lane at 241. So Puente's childhood was not an easy one. Her original birth name was Dorothea Gray. She was born in 1929, as I said earlier, in Redlands, California. Her childhood was not easy as her mother was an alcoholic and abusive and died when she was just 10 years old. Her father also died when she was eight, so she spent her teen years bouncing between foster care and orphanages, and she was allegedly SA'd at one point. When she was 16, she started engaging in SEX work, Although she eventually met and married a World War II veteran, she gave birth to a child in 1946 and another child in 1947. But motherhood was just not her thing, and she reportedly gave one of the children to a family member and then one of the children she gave up for adoption. She split with her husband in 1948. What followed this was a string of marriages and criminal convictions. She served four months in prison for writing a check under a false name, spent another 90 days behind bars after being caught in a police raid at a brothel, and then she eventually opened an unlicensed boarding house that she ran and operated throughout the 70s, catering to disabled, elderly, and homeless people. She was secretly stealing their benefit checks, though, and was convicted in 1978 and placed on five years of probation. So this is the part that I find extremely interesting when we go back to the story that we were just talking about, where she ends up getting convicted and they find seven But This was in the 80s. So she ran her first unlicensed boarding house in the 70s, got caught for stealing checks and all of that and being unlicensed, and then was put on probation in 1978. And by the 80s, here she is being arrested for being a serial killer and doing the exact same thing. I find that all very interesting. But how she killed her victims was with a drug called Dalamane. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's D-A-L-M-A-N-E. She was known to 
give them this pill or give them a pill and then that would sedate them she would then suffocate them they would lay in this room called the death room until she could have them buried and she used convicts to bury them in her backyard the dalamain drug was used for insomnia and after all the bodies were exhumed all seven bodies that were exhumed were found to have this dalamain drug in them so dorothy was a eventually arrested and while this part I find extremely confusing as well what was going on with police work back in the day but while investigators were searching her home and they had already I think, found a piece of a body so they were searching the rest of her yard and she had said that her nerves were getting to her and she asked the police could she please go have tea with her nephew at one of the hotels nearby the police said yes they said yes, and they let her walk away. She vanished. Of course she vanished. But a manhunt began for her, and her name, image was everywhere. And there was a man at a bar, and he was having drinks with a young lady who was very interested in the fact that he had a disability check and a retirement check coming in. And he thought she was acting very oddly, and then he realized she was the woman that was on the TV. So he made a call and turned her in and she was arrested four days later at the age of 59 in a motel in California. Oh yeah, they caught her. So just a few random little things to throw in here before we get to talking about what happened with the house because the house is still in existence that all of this stuff happened with and I think that's a pretty cool story too. But I just want to kind of mention that there is a few things that I learned in my research that I didn't put into a whole bunch of detail here, but apparently she had a social worker that whenever the social worker could not place other place these people into like a regular facility, this social worker would come to her and place these people with her. See, some of these people were homeless people that had drug and alcohol problems and so on and so forth and so they were a little more difficult to deal with and because they were difficult to deal with a lot of places would not let them be placed there and see dorothea would take anybody right she took anybody and everybody and now we know why she wasn't having to put up with anything she was just offing them so but again, let's go back to the fact she was caught in 1978 for doing this, collecting their checks and running an illegal boarding house, right? And then here she is on probation for that, and there is a social worker placing people in her home. I'm confused. But that's how things went, and that's how this scenario happened. Thankfully, she was arrested. Unfortunately, seven people lost their lives to additional that they believe was connected to her. And it was a tragic, tragic situation for all of those who thought that their loved ones were being taken care of in this boarding house. Now, the same lady that was placing these people into this this home with Dorothea had placed a man with her and then that man disappeared and that's when the questions started coming about more and more prior to that a couple weeks a month prior to that there was also an incident where a man said to the police that she was that Dorothea was burying people in her backyard but unfortunately the police didn't believe him because he was a drug addict so they just ignored what he said. It wasn't until this woman who had been placing people in Dorothea's home said that one of these people were missing. The police went to question her and then they spoke with another roommate who backed up Dorothea's story, one of the other people that were being boarded there. But he slipped the police a note and said that he was being threatened and had to back up her story. And then the police were able to get more information out of him and talk to him. And so that's when they started their digging into the backyard. Hope all of that makes a little more sense now that I explained it. But she was arrested, spent the rest of her life in jail, and died at the age of 82, as we already discussed. But that still leaves the home. What did they do with the home that all this happened at? Well, the house was a Victorian bungalow that was auctioned off in 2011 
for $215,000 to a Barbara Holmes and Tim Williams, who renovated it, knowing full well the history of the home. Barbara wanted to give it a fresh start, completely new, happy home. But that just wasn't going to happen. There was too many people that knew this home, that knew that it was particularly for these crimes and would come to visit it at the gate and so on and so forth. So Barbara and Tom decided to play with that angle a little bit. We have decor, which is playing along with the theme of the home, like a shower curtain that has crime tape all over it and a mannequin that is in the yard that is wearing the famous red coat that Dorothea was arrested in and then has a gray wig on it and she's holding a shovel in her hand. They have this mannequin that sits outside their house that looks exactly like Dorothea. And then they have a sign, a plaque on the outside of their fence that says, trespassers will be drugged and buried in the yard. <laughs> so they really played into the whole kind of crazy history of the home. The couple held a one day only tour of the home and the home has new appliances, walls are being knocked down, it's been renovated so it looks new, fresh and like welcoming. So that's kind of nice to know that they changed at least that much of it to make it, give it that welcoming feel. But they did play and they still do play with, you know, the mannequins and things like that um, because so many people wanna see the home. On that day, John Cabrera, the lead detective of the Fuentes case, also stopped by. He didn't want to come back when the house was being redone. He wanted to come back and see it when it was all finished and when it was happy. And he, sa he said he loves the fact that the home is now happy. Cabrera described areas of the home as he walked around. He described the death room as where she brought the victims after she had induced them with drugs or alcohol and she would place them on the floor and they would just lay there for days or weeks. No one's exactly sure of the timeline of how long they would stay there. He also pointed to a narrow stairway and he said this is where she would take the victims down and out. So what do you all think of this case? What do you think of this grandmotherly type looking woman who was actually a serial killer? What do you think of the fact that these convicts were helping her bury bodies? Do you think she tricked them? Do you think they knew what they were getting into prior? Or do you think they showed up and then became accomplices and were like, oh man, now we can't say anything. You know, like there's so many questions I have about this situation. Why was she getting away with running another boarding house and having someone recommend people to her to stay in this boarding house when she had just been arrested for this exact thing and was having to check in with someone who was supposed to be watching her and making sure she was behaving herself? What was going on? But this case is long since over and just something that I thought very interesting and would love to hear your thoughts on this case in the comment section below. Let me know what you all think. Wishing you much kindness and much love. Bye for now.